Hello and welcome to this Estranged Development Blog video. In this video I'm going to explore this ocean that you see in front of you and how it works uh, and also show you how I uh, made it work on lower end devices as well. So this ocean that you're seeing right now is currently using a technology called tessellation and that is a, a kind of GPU process that subdivides the triangles in the actual mesh on the GPU which allows you to kind of have a dynamically high poly uh, uh, mesh uh, depending on where the camera is. So I'm just going to show you how that works. So if I go to wireframe view you can see that the there are a lot of triangles in front of me, it's very dense and if I zoom out a little bit you'll be able to see the difference. You see there's a radius around the camera where they're dense and then they get less dense. So if I zoom the camera out further you can see it just kind of reverts back to the plane. Um, if I change this down, so this is currently a 4000 vertices plane, if I change it down to a 1000 um, and go back to the uh, back closer you can see that they it's still pretty dense but a little bit de bit less dense and I found that this was this could you could kind of see the the kind of triangle artifacts so it just wasn't it um, it still wasn't dense enough so kind of 4000 uh, uh, vertices 8000 triangles that was the the kind of sweet spot for this scene um, so like I said, unfortunately this doesn't work on lower end devices. Firstly because um, uh, tessellation is quite expensive, uh, you know, kind of computationally on the GPU, and also just because some graphics APIs don't support it. So what I wanted to do was replace this with a static mesh. Um, so remove the GPU tessellation, um, and in, by virtue of this scene, you don't move about in it in the game. This this is a scene from Estranged: The Departure. Um, it is a, you are kind of static in this in this scene. So what I could do is get away with um, making the polygons dense close to you, but then further away in the distance, making them less dense. So I'm going to show you what that looks like. So I've got a um, a, a mesh here, specially called Driftwood which is the name of this level. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to flip to a different water material, which is instead of dis uh, instead of tessellated, it's displaced. So that's now with the, the kind of subdivided uh, mesh and the displacement only material. So if I go into the wireframe view, you can see that it is pretty much as dense close to me as it was with the tessellation. But if I zoom out, in fact, I was in the wrong place, this is about as dense as it was with the tessellation. But if I zoom out, you can see that it does not change. You know, the, the density of the triangles does not change. And if I go over here, and I was to put the camera here, it doesn't look very good. It just looks like it's kind of bobbing up and down. But closer to the center, and I'll have to use the wireframe view to find that. There it is, closer to the, the driftwood. You can see it, it looks pretty good. It looks It looks very similar to the... Uh, to the tessellated approach. So the mesh that I'm using here is um, just around 34,000 vertices, so uh, that's 60, 68,000 triangles there, um, kind of arbitrarily um, uh, uh, subdivided in Blender. So I'm just going to show you how I did that very, very quickly because it's super simple. Um, so what I'm going to do is scale that up by 10 and then go into edit mode. And what I want to do first uh, is subdivide it and I have to type that into the search box because I'm not sure where that button is but um, <laughs> if I go and subdivide that to a reasonable amount at the minute there we go so we'll do it eight times um, so that can be the kind of outer subdivision and then I'm going to select this region with with C which is the kind of um, f uh, uh, face select tool uh, I'm just going to select it doesn't have to be terribly accurate so I'm going to subdivide that twice and then I'm going to go into that a little bit further and select that region which will be super close to the player and I'm going to subdivide that as well uh, perhaps not that much I mean I, c I could also repeat the process and what you end up with is a a kind of a, a still a plane mesh but it's it's subdivided at at different triangle densities so that's what we've got here I wonder if I can show you it in the in the mesh viewer in fact, let's clip that to the screen. So if I go on the wireframe view, uh, it's a little bit... Uh, what do I need to do? I need to remove the environment. There we go. 
it's a little bit hard to see but you can see there I've I've kind of done a better job on this one actually because it's a little bit more uniform but you can see um, that's the general context there's a concept there's kind of four levels of of subdivision here and um, and that doesn't require GPU tessellation and therefore works on lower end systems the only thing that you've got to watch out for is the uh, the number of triangles in the scene however uh, this scene is extremely simple, so you know we're unlikely to, to run into a problem with that. What I want to show you as well is another place where this is used. Um, so if I just go into this level called Dock, here we go. So um, this is this is exactly the same thing. So you can see that um, this is not using. I've confusingly named the material there, but this is using world position. Um, just the, the, the same as the other mesh, it's not using any tessellation. So if I if I go out here, this will be quite unsatisfactory because you can see that the water is just kind of bobbing up and down. But if I go back to the coast, you can see here that it is kind of, it doesn't look as nice as the other scene, but it is kind of following the, the kind of wave pattern that we've got. Um, what I'll just do quickly as well is dive into how exactly this, this wave pattern is, is generated. So I'll jump back to the driftwood scene. And we'll jump into this displacement material. Um, so you can see I've got a material instance here, MI. Uh, it's got a bunch of options on my master material, but what I'll look into is the, uh, the master material. Um, so here that is. Um, I've got this kind of... Uh, motion four-way chaos um, function here, material function, which is actually in the engine. This is part of Epic's content in the engine. Um, not sure how to jump to it, actually. Oh, no, maybe I duplicated this, actually, but it is definitely in the engine content. Um, but you can see it just kind of samples from... It, it pans a bunch of... It pans four instances of the same texture and samples from them in, in specific places. And it, it really gives kind of nice results with regards to water. Um, so I, I, I really like this this material function. But what I'm doing is I'm using the output of that, doing some adjustments to it, just to, um, to adjust the world position offset of the of the, the kind of vertex at the current at the current pixel um, so uh, you can see that I've got some some kind of no displace location overrides that's if you want to you want to turn off the displacement um, for a specific region or something like that I've, I've got that in, built into this material what have we got down here we've also got a a kind of fade at distance so stop animating if the if the camera is this far away um, but this is essentially how it works, and it uses the output of those of those materials uh, of those textures to to animate the the world position offset. I hope you enjoyed that video. Um, I know I haven't made a video for quite a while, but I'll I'll try and make a few more over the over the coming months. Uh, let me know if you want me to to dive into anything specific. Uh, and thank you very much for watching.